developed with other species naturally? Yeah, actually, uh, Romans, that's what barbarians mean, like the word barbaric. It means uh, drinks that uh, was like drinks
we will be able to do this is because Ojaba Care is the official insurance, group insurance, of the Tabernacle of Hedonism. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And of course, the cure for everything in Ojaba Care is medical marijuana. And that is why we have to legalize medical marijuana in 2016 with our votes. Several votes per person. Several votes during early voting, uh, morning, noon, and evening, and then on election day, Several votes, both our feet, our teeth, our hands, whatever we can, our dead grandmother, uh, our cousin in Thailand, Thailand. all of our in-laws in Siberia. Vote for Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we are going to get whatever amendment it is required to make medical marijuana legal here in Florida passed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A special prayers for Senator Dwight down in Miami and Key West and Monroe County. As you know, Senator Dwight is trying to legalize Recreational marijuana. Hallelujah! He has introduced the bill to the Senate and the floor of the legislature. Hallelujah! Let us pray for his continued success and continued re-election. Yes, in 2016, re-elect. Senator Dwight, hallelujah. hallelujah, even if he isn't up for an election, just write it somewhere on the ballot, Senator Dwight rules, hallelujah. hallelujah. Um, also the Republicrats, the Republicrats are committing uh, voter fraud all across the country by gerrymandering, and this is why we here in the Tabernacle of Hedonism have to vote back. A lot of people think that walking into the Republicrat headquarters and dosing them is the answer. Yes. That doesn't do any good. Yes, do it. Dose them. Dose those buttons. So we have to do this at the election ballot box. We have to vote several times. Why? Because the Republicans are also rigging the election. Hallelujah. In civil court. No longer in America are elections determined at the ballot box. They are determined in civil court. We need to wage our own lawsuits at civil court to even up the elections. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jamba. Praise Jamba. Uh, as for the uh, victims of demon alcohol, I can only pray for them. And remember, here in the Tabernacle of Edenism, we condemn demon alcohol. And if you do not listen, that is your between you and the goddess at Judgment Day. I can only preach and provide the truth. Demon alcohol, 
For it saith in Luke chapter 21, verse 34, Take heed, lest any time your hearts be overcharged with drunkenness and surfeiting. And here in the tabernacle of Edenism, we like to surfeit naked. Why? Because Adam and Eve were naked. And they were naked in the Garden of Eden, and that's where we want to go. Hallelujah. Because they have Hepness Almighty growing up there in the Ojamba sphere. Hallelujah. Well, uh, and the other special prayers, special prayers for uh, Boog. Brother Boog, Brother Boog will be sending nails into his nose. Hallelujah. Uh, he's also going to be taking condoms out of his nose. Hallelujah. So stay tuned for Brother Boog's antics. Hallelujah. How do you spell that? Uh, I think it's not. I asked if it was Brother Bud, but I know it's Brother Boo. Okay. And apparently his secret is demon alcohol. Excellent. So if you want to be like Brother Boo, putting nails in your nose and taking condoms out of your other nostril, drink demon alcohol. Hallelujah. And let the goddess take pity on your soul. As you know, the world is moving towards equality. The Republicans want to send the clock back. But they cannot because the world goes forward. The Demoblicans are taking advantage of the republicratic short-sightedness by advocating equality when they really are indifferent. So what is happening in America is that due to the republicrats and the Demoblican indifference, we are having a new class we are having the dumpster class. And in Dubitopia, the dumpster class rules. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not the ruling class. Not the bourgeois class. But the dumpster class. Hallelujah. Because capitalism implodes due to the ineptitude of the Demoblicans and the Republicans. Hallelujah. And what takes its place? Dubitopia. And of course, it is all based on Ojamba Care, which is socialized hempness almighty, hallelujah. And it is also based on legalized meth, legalized crack, and lots and lots of Thorazine and Respiridol and Yellow Jackets and Placidol, hallelujah. Are there any other special prayers here tonight? Anybody? Yes, yes. Uh, who? Special prayer. What? Okay, uh, yes. A special prayer for Nimrod. No. Leonard Nimrod. Leonard Nimrod. Jesus Christ. Uh, special prayers for all of the brothers and sisters of the Tabernacle of Edenism who have court tomorrow. Vindication. Hi, we have a prayer in the back. Ah, uh, yes. Sister Alex has a prayer. She's not feeling well. She wants us to pray for her. 
Uh, Sister Alex is not feeling well. She delivered a fantastic poem at the talent show in the show. And we pray for her speedy recovery, and we hope she expedites another performance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Any other special prayers here tonight? We're with you. Get better, Alex. I pray the show starts soon. Uh, we pray that the show starts without delay. Hallelujah. For Sunflower's uh, journey to the next rainbow clattering and that she arrives in one piece. Hallelujah. Oh, I found you. Oh, one pieces. One pieces. Hallelujah. Uh, our mother. Our mother. Who groweth? Who groweth? The greatest ganja. Jumbo sphere. Oh, heavenly mother. Oh, heavenly mother. Is she ever high? I'm the domestic that they trim up there. And really, really mellow is that her. Officer Friendly! Officer Friendly! Please forgive us! Please forgive us! If we stopped behind the semi at the green light, you should be stopping the semi because it may have ganja from California. Which is not locally grown. Blasphemous. Blasphemous. And if she finds anything suspicious, Because he died on the cross for all of our drug rails and needle exchanges. Hallelujah. We will mark on Jesus and you can vindicate us. Or adjudicate us. And even Baker Act us, which means more drugs. For thine is the cow pie. The rain, the rain and the shrub. and all the brothers and sisters who have made it here tonight. So, hallelujah. hallelujah. The Reverend Angel Dust, everyone. Hallelujah. Now, Reverend, how do I pronounce the name again? It's... Dorothy. What is that, our transition music? Oh, nice work, Jen. Gives us a feeling that we're a professional show. For those of you, how many people have never been to this show before? I, I, you, you crew in the middle? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody listens to the show. I don't know if you're doing it right. I, you know, you're like really paying attention. I don't know if that's, if that's the right thing to do. I mean, it's new for us. We, we're not used to that. What we like is groups of people at the bar facing the televisions and ignoring the show because that's, that's where it's at now with culture. I mean, 
you know, cell phones and, you know, complete disrespect. And, and we also don't give a shit. So by the, by the end, what I thought would be good is that we have the punk show that we had that moved the show out. We just have that when the show is supposed to be. Because I got to sit there and not do anything, and then they were feeding me beers. And I thought, that's better than what, you know, having to do the show and, you know, do stuff. And I got to look at the TVs, which were off, listen to punk music. Uh, everybody was talking, nobody was saying anything. It was fucking awesome, you know, so. I want to move that direction with the show. I think that's what to do. I don't want to fight it anymore. I want to join it. I want to join the spirit of complete and utter disrespect, unintelligible communications, and multitasking that is absolutely ineffective for each of the tasks. That's what I want to do. And by God, I'll do it. We're actually just making a video. We're not even doing a show. We promote the show on video, and that's the show. We don't even do the show anymore. We just do the promotions for the show. And as you can see, it packs them out. I mean, the fucking place is packed out with, 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 fuck you, fuck you. So anyway, uh, great. Okay, so that's what I have to say. Uh, now, I want to see a guy put nails in his face and blow condoms out of his nose. I think that's where we need to go. This is a religious institution. Now, how do I do it? What is the name? What do I say? Buzz. I'm not writing anything down. I got one brain cell that fires. What is it? Bud? Buzz. Butch? Booger? Book? 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 Books? Ladies and gentlemen, this is first time ever at the Tabernacle of Hedonism. We are turning it over to him. This is Books in the Red of God. Can I get some people like really close? Can we move up? Yeah, please. Uh -huh. Don't do it! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Woo! Let's do this! Yeah. Yeah. Alright, right, so I'm Boots the Clown. On behalf of Mr. Opal's Tiny Circus, we have one of our fellows going to court tomorrow for shoplifting. Yeah! I'm really drunk. You, you guys ever watch like those TV shows and there's like that clown right before they do that shit? They're just like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? <laughs> God damn it. Alright. So, what I'm going to do for you guys, there's two apps. Three, maybe. Um, they're Blockhead and Middle Floss. Does anyone, is anyone aware of what those things are? Yes. You do. Fucking awesome. All right, so without further ado, here I go doing those shit like I usually do. This is a nail I found on the ground today. Yes. It is dirty, it is pointy, and I'm going to try to put it on my nose. I did not. Oh no. So I'm gonna put this away real quick. Don't even hit me. This is a condom, right? Yeah, you catch it! This is what they didn't teach you in sex ed class. Now, uh,
Just remember, whenever he says he's too big for a condo, this is how big they go. Oh. All right. Now that we've done that, God bless you all. I have my Let's get back to uh, nails. Here's one nail. Call it on the stage. That's one nail. Uh, are y'all impressed yet? Yes! Wow, well, here we go. Who here knows how to count? Any of us? Three. Alright, cool. This is the fourth one. All right. Now, who here wants to hear a song? I do. You got your ukulele? Yeah. Oh, I was worried there wasn't a ukulele, thank God. Uh, oh, oh, shit. We're going to have to be really quiet, guys. Shh. Yeah, come on! I 
say you are so beautiful, I will miss you cause I wish you were so good. Oh, miss you cause I wish that you are so able to pick my up and balance and change your mind. Oh, miss you cause I wish that you were so beautiful, oh, miss you cause I wish you were so kind. Oh, miss you cause I wish that you were so able to pick my up and balance and change your mind. Alright, now that I got that out of the way.
out there. Even though it's legal to marry, what if I could pop that cherry? On the ten, I know they like. I can't please have your daughter's ass tonight. I just can't get her off my Yes, it is true. 
I have seen the gunmen kill and go free to kill again. And they tell me you are brutal, and my reply is, on the faces of women and children, I have seen the marks of want and hunger. And having answered, so I turn once more to those who sneer at this, my city, and I give them back the sneer and say to them, come and show me another city with lifted heads, singing so proud to be alive, and coarse and strong and cunning flinging magnetic curses among the toil of piling job on job. Here is a tall, bold slugger set vivid against the little soft cities, fierce as a dog with tongue lapping for action, cunning as a savage pitted against the wilderness, bareheaded, shoveling, wrecking, planning, building, breaking, rebuilding under the smoke, dust all over his mouth, laughing with white teeth, under the terrible burden of destiny, laughing as a young man laughs, laughing even as an ignorant fighter laughs who has never lost a battle, bragging and laughing that under his wrist is the pulse and under his ribs the heart of the people, laughing, laughing the stormy, husky, brawling laughter of youth, half naked, sweating, proud to be hog butcher, tool maker, stacker of wheat, player with railroads, and freight handler to the nation. Awesome. We've got time to have one more, because we're going to be, we're going to run that. All right, one more. Pick, pick the winner. OK. Who remembers Amy Winehouse? Oh, well, yeah. Back to black. He left no time to regret. Kept his dick wet with the same old safe bet. Me and my head high and my tears dry. Get on without my guy. You went back to what you know, so far removed from all that we went through. And I tread a troubled track. My odds are stacked. I'll go back to black. We only said goodbye with words. I died a hundred times. You go back to her and I go back to, I go back to black. I love you so much, it's not enough. You love blow and I love puff, and life is like a pipe, and I'm a tiny penny rolling up the walls inside. Black, black, black. I go back to, I go back to black. Woo! Yeah! Here's a joke. God and man. Man is talking to God. God, how much is a million dollars? God says, to me, it's like a penny. God, how long is a million years? God says, to me, it's like a minute. God, can I have a penny? God says, wait a minute. Oh, Fantastic. The naked poet can also be heard. The Civic Media Center Poetry Jam, which I understand is now starting at 8. For all the people who don't go out late, maybe the punk rockers can catch up over too early in the evening before they go to bed. <laughs> I want the Poetry Jam to start at 3 in the freaking morning. Yes! After I've had a fucking yes. fifth of Jack Daniels. That's when poems happen. Yes! How could they be bad at that point? I think mean, that would be great. All the poems would be awesome. <laughs> you wouldn't remember them the next day, but who cares? So that's probably good, too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our next performer just finished a run doing a very heavy role in an amazing play that was written by and uh, acted in by Michael Bobbitt. If you missed it, you missed a heavy piece of theater. Uh, but I want to enter the great and wonderfully talented and very good friend of mine, George O'Brien. Give him a round of applause. He will be doing whatever he wants to do. George O'Brien! Third book I've smoked and nothing happened. 
And he figured out a way to set up Eve by talking to a snake. He said, hey, dude, look, man, my arms are so short. I just can't reach and get that apple up there. You mind getting that for my bitch, yo, dog? As he tilted his fig leaf ever so gangsta. <laughs> the serpent said, sure. My name's Steve. I'll do anything for Homo sapiens. <laughs> So he talked Steve the serpent into going and getting the fucking apple, man. And Eve was like, what you doing, Steve? He was like, that other dude with the small penis getting under the poison ivy, don't tell him it's poison and ivy, it's hilarious, told me to get you an apple. So he took the apple and he shoved it up Adam's ass when Eve wasn't looking. Okay. And then suddenly, oh, no, the acid is starting to kick in. Hold on, hold on. I'm glad you told me to take it 30 minutes before the show time. You bet. All right, cool. Okay, so now the apple's coming out of Adam's ass, which is the Adam's apple. Don't eat that pie. It's furry and tastes like shit. Okay. All right, so now we're making a new religion. Yeah, don't read the Bible. Don't read the Bible. This is me. This is me here. I'm not ripping anyone off. Okay. Okay, so the, the apple comes out of his ass. And, and Eve says, Steve, man, that looks like it has caramel on it. And Steve, the serpent, well, he's like, what the fuck is caramel? This, now, this isn't a garden of Eden, man. They didn't even know how to pronounce that shit yet. So Steve's eating an apple. No, Adam's shitting out an apple. All right, fuck this. Let's talk about something else. Nipples. Nipples, thank God. Nipples look like pepperoni. Thank you. Vaginas! Vaginas don't look like pepperoni. No. Vaginas look sacred. They look like an eyeball that's closed. Unless you have 17 children. Then it looks like a flying fucking bat from hell that you give an apple you shit out to. Take the apple. Steve said you like apples. Right, sorry, sorry. Going back in time way too far. So do you guys like how I'm talking about puppies? <laughs> Never kick a puppy. Don't kick a puppy or use kittens as condoms. Especially kittens. There's 20 reasons why not to use a kitten as a condom. And every one of them spells ouch. No, it's okay. I'm the one that put the volume in the water. Um, belly buttons with lint. No, no. Monkeys, handless monkeys on speakers with bondage masks. What the fuck? Now that's something to talk about. Now that's something to talk about. Okay. Why did the Irishman cross the road? None of your fucking business. How many Irish men does it take to change a light bulb? None. Irish aren't afraid of the fucking dark. Oh, oh come on! Not you guys, very good. All right, this is because of the religion that I just bring up way too much stuff about Adam and Eve and piss off a bunch of Christians. I don't know. I took the acid too. I have no because idea. Because if so, then forgive me. I'm not this, Christian. And I'm bored. Awesome. You're bored. What do you want? What do you want? Some labia? You want sex jokes? You want what kind of jokes? You want, I sister? Want to hear of insane of your insanity. The insane of my insanity. I heard it the last time, and I will let you. Yeah, you have to see, I'm, I'm kind of like burnt out. I shaved off my beard. I did this fucked up play. You're I don't know. You're a liar. Am I a liar? Let's see it. Let's see the real exactly. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you Run. 
run your fingers through my dying trees beneath my sister's noon coded sacred seed released it's hard to explain I don't think you'd conceive you're looking at us through your dirty windshields in disbelief swoon and build your fire spread and crack your whip I'm clawing at the keys that you threw at me within my burning crib kiss me charred and able to speak I look deep in your eyes Desperately searching for a hand to reach out and shed my disguise. Batman. I looked her in the eyes on the day that she told me that she didn't want to be a mother anymore. And I said, what? What happened? And she said to me, I don't know. I don't want to quit smoking. I don't want to quit drinking. I don't want to quit partying. And I know it's going to break your heart. <laughs> And I said, you got to be kidding me. Come on, man. And she was not kidding me. She made an appointment at the shop back, and the child was gone within the hour, and I had nothing at all I could do about it. That night, I dreamt of this horrible, horrible demon crawling its way out of a toilet that was my daughter. It's not funny. She whispered in an ancient tongue that I had never heard before. She whispered, and I run away new people like a plague. I am sorry. You're doing great. Keep going. No, I'm doing so great. They take care. You're doing great. We're keeping our distance now. You saw a gun in your back pocket. In order to breathe into life, you must first breathe life into another set of eyes. You have to look at another human being that you may not like upon first glance and say, I know there's a heart beating in your chest. I know there's a brain pulsating in your head. I know when you woke up this morning, you probably felt great. You felt horrible. You had a bad fucking life experience. Somebody called you fat. Somebody called you skinny. Someone called you an asshole. And it's stuck. And you're hurting. And I love you. And I don't like it. I love your heartbeat. I love the fact that you're here. I like the fact that every celebrity and everyone in this room took a shit and a piss today. I like the fact that we get hungry. I like the fact that we cry. We're not different. We have different interests. We have different points of view. But when we stand and look at the same thing, we see it in a long line of eyeballs. Little children that used to be old people soon to be. Life is but one breath. You've heard me say this before. Upon birth, we inhale. Upon death, we exhale. Make sure that one breath that you have, you do something good with it. Give a homeless, stinky fucker a dime or a hug if you dare. Give a crack hit. I am going there, buddy. I am going there because I've been there. So fuck you and don't tell me what to say. I don't tell you what to say, and don't you ever censor me, man, because I support you. So fuck off if you don't like it. Here's the deal, man. Your shit is sacred to me, and your heartbeat is too. If you don't like what you're hearing, then you have a choice, and it looks like you're making one. Yeah, good. And I appreciate you and love you for your choice, but if you don't know the path I walk, I'm certainly not going to judge you for yours. If you don't have ears to hear my story, see if I ever listen to another word of yours. Yeah. Fuck you with a condom you rented, because I will not use your own, sir. Have dreams tonight and dream of beauty. Oh, Brian! What the hell was that about? I don't care. Obviously, I touched a button that needed to be touched, and next time I see him, we'll hug. But I started off the evening wrong by making lame jokes. All I want to say is everyone in this room fucking love one another. If that's not love, that's hard love. If it's horrible love, then tell me I'm horrible. But everyone in this fucking room, I don't give a shit if you're one-legged, three-legged, four-legged, four-eyed. If you got fucking shit coming out of your ass or shit coming out of your mouth, you're worthy of something, and I love you. Does it matter? Of course it fucking matters. Right? Of course it Can we change the world in this room? 
No, there's only a handful of us. Bullshit, man. We can make it a better place. We don't even have to get together and Facebook it. We don't have to make it an event. Just wake up and see the world differently, man. Be happy. Be willing to talk about bird shit, baby shit, and how not to kill. Killing is bullshit, man. Killing from a distance is worse. You don't even, it is a penis. It is my penis. This is my dream. I'm folding myself in half. I am fucking myself and making the unperfect baby that I am. I like it very difficult. No, 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 no. In the beginning, there was absolutely nothing. In the end, there will be something beautiful. What is it? What is it? My vagina. Your vagina. Well, I cannot speak about that yet. But anyway. Can I tell the, can I tell the starfish story and then end it? Alright, I just want to tell the story because these guys are new and I feel like I've made an ass of myself and they have no idea what I'm about. I do like 17 different characters and I apologize, folks. You actually seem like nice people and we need nice people here. And the fact you got up, it, I have a pain in my chest and my stomach seeing you move. I'm like, oh, I fucked it up. Here's the story of the starfish. This is not mine, but I tell it every now and then because I think it's really important. One day, a young man's walking down a beach after a horrible, horrible storm. And there's all sorts of shit washed up on the beach. All sorts of shit washed up on the beach! Give me three minutes. Give me three minutes. I'll give you more. Walking, old young man walking on the beach after a storm, there's all sorts of shit washed up. It's horrible. But young man doesn't give a shit. He's like, oh wow, look at all the shells, look at all this neat driftwood. As he's walking down the beach, as he's walking down the beach, he sees in the distance the silhouette of a figure walking frantically, running frantically. He doesn't know back and forth from the shore to the water, back and forth from the shore to the water. As he gets closer, he sees this old man, somebody maybe in his 80s. He's gathering up starfish, and he's gathering them and he's taking all the starfish and going to the edge of the water and throwing them desperately back into the water. As the young man gets close, I've watched your show, please give me three minutes of your life. That's all I'm asking. He walks back and forth to the water with the arms full of starfish and throws the starfish back in the water. Young man sees this. He looks around. There's millions of fucking starfish from this storm all over the beach. The storm has washed them all up, and they're dying. And the young man's like, this guy's going to give himself a fucking coronary. So the young man walks up to the old man, and he says, what are you doing? And the old man says, he says, brother, man, there's all these starfish that are washed up on the beach. You've got to save them, man. I mean, you've got to save them. And he's got them armful and armful and throwing them back in the water. And the young man's looking at him like he's crazy. He says to him, he says, old man, you're nuts. You're going to kill yourself. There's too many of them. You can't make a dent. It doesn't matter. The old man running to the water with an armful holds up one single starfish and he says, it matters to this one. And he throws it as far as he can in the water. Bye, starfish. The young man sat there for a moment and the old man's words struck him like the storm that hit that beach. And pretty soon the young man started to pick up some starfish. And he started to run back and forth. And people asked him what he was doing. And he answered them. And they got motivated. And they started picking up fucking starfish. And before you knew it, everyone on that beach was saving the fucking starfish. Yeah! Woo! So don't tell me one little old man can't change goddamn world. He certainly can make an impact on some fucking starfish and some people. So start doing something and motivate people and get goddamn busy because Lord knows we have been hit by a fucking storm. Sorry my penis didn't get the same.
is the show just getting warmed up? We already had somebody storm out already? Things are getting good. He should have put his shoes on. I think the circulation was flowing too freely there. Boy, oh, this is a wonderful show. Now, who wants to go on now? Who didn't go on and wants to go on? Do you have something to do? Something to share with us? That one! That one right there! Well, okay, we're going to go there. This one. This thing! Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's getting harder and harder to... Uh, Pay attention, <laughs> but uh, let's see what happens when the ukulele music begins. Please come Woo! to the stage. Get out of that seat because that's weird. You're not. You're no longer. Like, you want to do it down there? I'll bring the mics to you. I can probably do that. That might be fun. I want that. I want that. Okay, I want that. Thank you. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't know how to make this one. I didn't sing. Whatever, I'm not gonna tune in. Hey guys, um, this is the, I wrote this song about bitch boys. Great. I'm so excited. Um, handling the truth. Sorry, we're done. We're excited. We just want to see you. Thank you. 
for the show. I'm Josh's book. Huh? Rob Springer. Rob Springer. And he's talking. We've already had people squirm out angry, so we know we're doing something right. We probably need a laugh now. So if I can have everyone's attention, which I know is impossible to do, I just say it to be ironic. What? It's so funny, I look out and nobody is talking, but I hear talking everywhere. It's really weird. Maybe it's just me now. Maybe it's the drugs. Finally, they've kicked in and now I don't care, so we can do the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the comedy stylings of the one and only Andy Martoni. Finally, if you know what, Andy, if you need my white condom, let me know. That's a stinky fucker. Uh, Did you just say, "Let me show you my light condom"? No, man. Is that what you said? I heard light condom. Yes. My light condom. And when I'm thinking light condom, I'm thinking light beer. Uh -huh. No. And when I'm thinking light beer, I'm thinking you're going to have a bad time. Yeah, I certainly hope so. I pissed off the naked someone, Andy. That's how we do it tonight. We're good. Hey, hey, you with the laptop in the back. How we doing? How, how we doing tonight, baby? Yeah. We cool. We cool, man. We cool. You good? So, like, this isn't a joke or anything. This is just an observation. I, like, the other day I came into town. I don't come to Gainesville very much because you guys are full of bullshit and, like, your drugs are terrible. Go back to Hawthorne, you cunt. Yeah, well, there's better drugs there. Anyways, I'm coming to town. I'm coming to town. And I see these guys. I see the SWAT team busting this fucking crack house, this local crack house. And I'm like, holy shit, they're busting this crack house. Oh my god, it's so crazy. I mean, I'm on my way to buy drugs, but they're busting the crack house. Yeah. And I'm like, what? I'm like, whoa, it's so crazy. But here's the crazy thing. Even more crazy is the next day, there were more motherfuckers outside the crack house standing around, I don't know, getting high on crack, whatever the fuck they do. And they got busted uh, fucking again. What is with you motherfuckers to get busted again in the same place? I mean, like, roaches and crackheads are pretty similar. You put the light on, they'll disappear. But in this town, I'm not the same. They all fucking shrivel fucking back. So, I, I thank you, Tom, for the only person laughing in the room tonight. Hey, Tom Miller. Oh, look, this is, like, like, I should probably start because the best Star Trek scene of all time is right now where Kirk and Spock fight to the death. I should probably shut the fuck up. Shattered it, go to the funeral, and neither should I. Too this soon, thing is, oh, too soon. oh, oh, too soon. come on, hey man, be cool. <laughs> Shit, what's up? So, do any of you guys watch television? No. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you've seen those commercials from McDonald's or Burger King, right? They show those nice, thick, juicy burgers. And think yourself, oh my god, only $2.99 for the Big Mac is so juicy and sweet. I must kill the president. Dun, 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 dun. That possibility message didn't work. <coughs> that sucked too. Anyways, um, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about myself. So, my name is Andrew Martoni, the one and only. You're, you're clapping for nothing. Like, literally, I can say, I'm a funny guy, I'm Bill Cosby. Everybody clap for me raping bitches. I mean, you literally fucking clap for fucking nothing, and you're doing it again. Stop it. Stop it. I hear a weird echo. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I hate my dad. So, anyways. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Where does it start? Where does it start? I guess it starts with my mom. So... <laughs> Did your mom, did your mom ever tell you bedtime stories as a kid? Uh, sort of. She yeah? Sang more protest songs. More protests. Really? Cool. Woo! Your mom sounds a bit like my mom. See, my mom, she used to tell me her old asses stories, right? 
<laughs> See, it turns out, if, you know, that um, a cat in a hat brings over green eggs and ham, you're going to have a pretty fucking wild night. But she also warned me, if you ever take one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, it's a pretty crazy experience. Yeah. But my mom was also pretty crazy. She also, one time she checked me out, checked me and my brothers out of school, like in, in very young. She actually kidnapped us. And uh, that's, yeah, and we traveled all over, we traveled all over, all over the United States. We saw all sorts of wonderful, magical things. And that's where I met my stepdad, Aquila. He was an Indian man, not the kind of, like the dot heads of like, you know, at the convenience stores. He was the kind of, like, you know, the kind of who raid a village and take all their shit. He was that kind of Indian. Anyways, he taught me great things. He taught me how to hunt. He taught me how to fish. He also taught me how to tell the difference between good and bad cocaine. <laughs> Anyways, basically you want to hear if you want to hear a little, uh, a little reference, if you get cocaine, like this, like if you get cocaine in this town is bad, you need to go at least 50 miles south <laughs> to get the good stuff. But yeah. It's true. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more I'll, I'll tell you more about my family. My dad. One time I was sitting at my dad's house and I was like, Dad. I need some more dick jokes for my act, right? And that's when my dad was like, son, you're my greatest dick joke. So I always came out to my brother as bisexual. Yeah, ooh, I'm bi, whoa, yeah. And but my brother, the first thing he said to me was like, do these pants, do, do they look good on me? And I was like, sorry, bro, I don't got, I don't got those parts. <laughs> On my grandfather's deathbed, you know what he told me? He told me, son, I don't think about the pussy I got. I think about all the pussy I didn't get. Yeah. All right. I, yeah, it's kind of crazy deep. You know what? I don't think I don't think the police killed Eric Garner. Yeah, that's this is for you in the back. People who are drinking and, and like talking about high and cool things trying to get laid. You're actually talking about how awesome you are. I don't, I don't think, I don't think that Eric Garner died because he was black. I think he died because of tight cop pants. That's right, tight cop pants, baby. I mean, let's be honest. Being police officers are a tough job. I mean, every day you're sitting behind the cop car and you're patrolling, you're doing your duty, and everybody on the outside is bad and terrible and evil. And at the same time, your fucking pants are too goddamn tight. And so obviously, you gotta kill your, you got to kill your quota of black, young black men. I mean, that's a given, right? I mean, they're the bad guys. But meanwhile, your fucking pants are too goddamn tight. And listen, God only gave us so much blood. He gave us enough blood to run the car and not the brain. We all know that. We all know that. When you get into that kind of meaty cop frenzy, <laughs> the cop killing frenzy, you gotta kill a black boy. You gotta kill a black kid. Ooh, it's heavy, it's heavy, it's heavy. What else is happening? All well, these people in the back looking at me and thinking and thinking and thinking. How you doing back there? Hey, Andy, how about ISIS? <laughs> Yeah, let's let's lighten the mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a B C one two three talking about A B C I S I S A B C. Obama won't even call them what they are. They're fucking uh, they have all the rattle 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 cola coca cola curlis cameras. Obama won't even call them what they are. Why not? You know why? It's because Obama is too scared of being the 47 flavors of Obama. That's right. Have you been to Baskin Robbins? Have you watched Fox News? Obama is the 47 flavors of president. He's every flavor you can be. He's Kenyan dark chocolate. He's atheist radical Muslim. He's about every fucking flavor you can be. Green tea, with communist sprinkles on top, baby. Mmm. Mmm. I vote for him again, wouldn't you? I don't. I'm trying to ramble here and like, give me a topic. Give me, hey, you in the back. Her vaginal vaginas. 
<laughs> they're really high and hard to get, harder than the normal vaginas. Oh, where I failed miserably. Urethros and meerkats. Is everything you have to say vagina? Like you must be as you must be I more than more than I am. You know what you remind me of? Thank you, thank you. You remind me. So like, I've been so sexually deprived that in my youth, I used to have this shitty day job where like stock shelves and like a random day, you know, random fucking grocery store. And I used to get really horny. And everything that I ever touched, I associate with sex. And so one day, I'm here and I'm stalking the shelves at CVS down the street, by the way. Oh, okay. CVS. And I'm looking, I'm looking at these can of green beans, right? And they're sexy, sweet, juicy, tender, young, green, tender. It's a sweet peas. And I'm stalking these sweet peas. And I'm like, damn, mm, baby, good. And I'm getting hot. I'm getting horny, baby. And then I pick up the box of Orville Reckenbacher. <sighs> and Orville says that he's hot, juicy, and ready to pop in five minutes or less, just like me. And I'm thinking, mm, damn, Orville Reckenbacher. I gotta give you some of that popcorn, baby. Mm. Yeah. What's today's date? What's today's date? I don't even know. Third round. The third, what year? 2015. 1972. 1982. 1982. 1982. Do any of you remember 9, do, do any of you remember 9-11? 2011? Do any of you here? Yeah? 2011? Yeah. Yeah. The day, the day the terrorists attacked, September 11th. Well, you know what? Uh, we hemorrhoids. I remember, remember 2011, it was a lot of booze. Anyways, 21, 11, anyways, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, all I remember is, I was thinking that, that day, I was very young, I was like, I wonder if we had football practice that day. And damn sure enough, we did. In fact, the coach, he got this all up, he said, like, listen boys, Remember, this is 9-11, terrorist attacks, in case you don't remember, in case you're fucking atheist, hedonistic bastards. He's, anyways, my coach got this all up, be like, listen, boys, I don't, I, 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 I don't, I don't know, the war we're in, shit, I don't know if Jesus gonna come back, but I tell you, I tell you, I tell you what I do know, we're gonna play some football, yeah, we're gonna play some football, so strap up, boy. Andy, come over here, boy. Come over here. Listen, I'm going to tell you, Andy. I'm going to tell you. I know you're fat. And I know you're slow. And I know you've been thinking, who's going to save me, right? Who's going to who, who save you, boy? Mama ain't going to do it. Daddy ain't going to do it. Coach won't do it. That's right. Coach going to save you. It's like you're going to save the quarterback, you see, right? Right? Because the quarterback, you see, the quarterback, he, he's a tower, right? He, he's a tower, right? He's a tower. And the football, boy, the football is America. So what you gonna do? What you gonna do? I'm gonna protect freedom, coach. Damn yeah, right. So thank you. I'm One day, one day, I'm gonna run for president. Yes, that's right. I'm gonna run for president of the whole fucking universe. And I'll tell you, just like most presidents, what's my political flat platform? Platform. Platform. No, here's where it is. Here's where it is. The first rule, the first rule is no sex. I'm looking at you, pretty girl. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't help it. Sorry. You're pretty in your front, and I can't help it. Anywho, um, no sex, no sex on Christmas. No sex on Christmas. If Jesus can't get laid, nobody can. And my second rule, my second rule to gather all of this up, my patriotic rule, is we should paint the motherfucking moon. Right? Paint the fucking moon! It's recent real estate. 
What would you pay? What would you what would you pay it? You know, not even how can Jesus get it. Turn away blue for America. I think I think we should put up small graphic lights. We should fucking light up the moon, right? In fact, we could put like 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 the Nike check or like the golden arch of McDonald's. That way there's motherfucking African there's motherfucking Africans kind of get the real picture, you know? Fuck you. Buy the timber shoe. That was corporate tourism. Alright, better idea. Better idea, better idea, better idea. How about how about we put tits and ass? On the moon. How do we, we put pornography and sex on the moon? Yes! We lit up the sky with teeth and ass. Pterodactyl vaginas! That way, the pterodactyl vaginas and all those other motherfuckers might just pop a load. Who knows? We might be waiting for world peace. Thank you very much. Pterodactyl pussy. Why not? Why not? And on the moon. Why not? I'm voting for you for president of the, uh, what was it, the universe? The whole thing. I just want to be president of the pterodactyl pussy. <laughs> me too, Andy. Me too. <laughs> I do too. I have been needing pterodactyl pussy for quite some time. Uh, it's just too loud to keep in the house, though, is the problem with it. You know, you wake up in the morning, and you're like, Hey, pterodactyl pussy, how are you this morning? It's like, ah, ah. Hi and rare. James Wesson, the renegade deacon, is here in a rare unicorn-like appearance, ladies and gentlemen. It, he didn't know if he was going to go on. I'm offering the opportunity, and I think it would be some kind of a stunner. So here is James Weston, the Renegade Deacon, ladies and gentlemen. Sounding like you need to pop an aspirin. Whoa. 
I see you aspiring to be the GOAT. Put your rhymes in the tub and they still wouldn't flow. Well, my shit like a butterfly bee hybrid. Your mixtape should be stranded on a desert sea island. I be wildin' in a gallery, wildin'. Yo, call me Brian Wilson, catch me smiling. <laughs> Heart of a donkey, face of a lion. My raps run laps around tracks without trying. My field goals finna garner 50 gold medals. No brake, no gas, no clutch, no pedals. <laughs> Y'all yeah! settle for those who would pedal rose petals. Rap so good, but I look so metal. Damn. Wow, all right. This is, yeah, it's good. I'm going to come back and, oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do the same, uh, I'm going to come back and do the same ones uh, when there's more people. Um, so, I'm sorry. I don't know. Cool. I'll come. I'll come earlier. It's fine. It's my fault. It's cool. We rent, you know. It's good to see you, man. Nice to see. Yeah. The naked it, poet. It is good to see you. some. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We rent. Yeah. What? We had one more person if you come earlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could have had the naked poet. I could have had the oogles, and I could have had like those seven people that somehow got into like a five door little car. Um, it was it was like you see there were like twenty of them and then they all got into a clown car and drove off. It was weird. It was parked right there. All right, um, all right. So, um, thank you. So, uh, so let's see. Um, let's try a stand. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Star Trek references. Okay. Um, Yeah, whatever, yeah. Um, the wrong two Beatles died first. George Carlin, yeah, whatever. Alright. This is um this is a song that has a hook. I'm not gonna do the I'm not gonna do the hook. I still I'm on light duty. Use your words, James. And your vocal cords. Alright. This is a little another rap poem. Or a hip hop poem. Or whatever you know, you know. Um All right, 20, act one, 24 bars, okay. You know I hold it down like Tuvok, so high kind of like off two rocks. Living out of a hat that's ooh-ah, come with the hi-hats, como sucia. Whoa, I'm stupid, whoops, I mean sucio. Come through with the super stupid soupy flow. Burn the paper off, all you do is blow. Shit, man, I'm just trying to be a superhero. I'm at the salad bar. I'm at the soup station. Catch me in New Orleans straight eating new crustaceans. I'm eating crusty bread. I'm at the soup spot. All I make is bread. Yes, I do rock. I'm at the soup spot. I'm at the salad bar. All I did was just reverse the shit like Malamar. I play with Hoti, je mange la salade. All fast and feel like Darmok and Jalad. On the ocean, at Tanagra, Temba. His arms open, I gotcha. Rap Tamari in, fake Rastafari in. Back off, man, I don't tell you what to put Tamari in. Shit, man, I don't tell you what to do like ever. But you best believe, man, competitors, I sever. Oh, uh, you mean competitors? That's right, I'm the severer. Big whateverer, betterer, swing like Roger Federer. Shit. All right, yo, yo, yo. And then it's the hook, and then fuck you. All right. <clears throat> act two, act two. All right. I know I gotta have faith like Fred Durst, but sometimes I feel like I'm just the next worst. I'm eating cheddar worst. I make friggin' bangers. I'm like the bangles, man. Bring out the tiger tamers. I know I gotta have faith, George Michael, but still letting out that rebel yell, Billy Idol. Life sucks, man, but you ain't gotta be a fighter. It's a nice day, man. Billy Idol. White Wedding. Black Vulcan, step to the table and you know I pack options. Outer space shit, obviously, raps often. Whoa, dude, trap is a verb, not a genre. I ain't gotta tell you that trapping is a jam, man. I also afford a shit like a great blue heron. Half Warhol, half Malcolm McLaren. Uh, 
reach far beyond the sea. Bobby Darren, whoa, whoa, damn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, should I do, should I do another one? Let's just do one I don't know, and I'll just like stop on them. Okay, um, then I'll do that like four more times. Um, kid, awesome! He raps off, and you can't stop him. Uh, see him in France rocking. Your label couldn't drop him. They see him as Franz Kafka, blazing but not saucing. Salute me to can of sausage. You sometimes use the third person. Yes, you boy the best, but probably the worst version. Master of the verse, pastor of the church sermon. Y'all looking for lyrics kind of like you purse searching. Y'all Alex Trebek's to my turd Ferguson. Smoked up all the grass, now you in the dirt skirmishing. Kid made the paper like if a perp murdered him. Kid made the paper like cheese, couldn't curdle him. Um, okay, that's all I remember. <laughs> all right, all right, thank you. Um, right, okay, that's, is that good? That's good. Um, yeah, let's do, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I got another one. I'm not, I, got, I got more, and I'm just going to keep it to myself. Yeah, thank you. That's what I'm going to do from now on, because why bring a thing with the beats on it when I could, you know, I mean, then it's just going to obscure the lyrics anyway. And... <laughs> do you want the mic? I'm good. I'm, I'm all right. Thanks for, thanks, yeah, thanks for, uh... wow, thanks, man. Wow. Yeah, big one in the rap game. Yeah. Shout out to Jack Toft. Shout out New Orleans, shout out Buffalo. Shout out Tom. Over here. Oh. James Wesson, everybody, the renegade deacon, the amazing James Wesson, always talented, bringing the word. Oh, wait, I want in on that. I, my eyes hurt. I look like shit. I should try to take a good one. Okay. Right, only put the good ones up. All right, great. That was a Kodak moment. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Cinemike. Yeah! Yeah. Am I screwing anybody tonight? Did everybody get to go on? Cinemike and I are going to close the show unless I fucked up. So, what's up, Cinemike? I only got one mic. Which is ironic, since you're Cinemike. Uh, I don't know what to say, you know, uh... Uh, Leonard Nimoy died. I thought one of the best things he ever did was that creepy role that he played in the uh, first remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers that nobody knows that movie except for a few, right? You see that film? Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. I've seen the ending. I've seen parts of it. Yeah, that's Donald a Sutherland one? Yeah. 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 That's a shit, man. Remember oh, Leonard Nimoy was in that? Yeah. He was a writer and then he, he became one of the you know, pod people, and then he was like trying to convince Donald Sutherland to join the horrible ranks. The bad fight scene was awesome. Awesome? That movie was awesome. I love that film. The bad fight scene. That was amazing. Remember the dog with the human head on it? You remember that? Yeah, I kind of do remember that. Yeah. That was all like being scared. Did you see any of the things that won? You know, did you see uh, Boyhood or whatever? Did you see? Uh, any of that? All I saw was American Sniper. How was the fake baby in that? Good? I don't know. I didn't really remember it. I mean, I remember seeing it on YouTube, but it didn't really affect me when I saw the movie. How was the movie for you? It was all right. All right, Clint Eastwood, yeah. <laughs> it's a big hit in Iran. Does that surprise you? No. Thanks, Sid Mike. It's just great to really, you know, get into your philosophy and uh, hear what you have to say about films. Um, you want to do the damn Kevin Bacon thing and get the fuck out of here, or what do you want to do? You, you want to mention any films? You want to talk about any cinema stuff? Sidney Lauper! 
Yeah. All right, we'll do Cindy Lauper and then we'll do Michaels. Can you do Cindy Lauper? Oh, we already did that, sorry. Do it again. Dude, man. That's pretty No. All right, let's do it for fun, just for fun. Really? Well, Cindy Lauper was in the Goonies with Josh Brolin, and Josh Brolin was in Sin City 2 with David Kilfor with uh, Mickey Ward, and Mickey Ward was dying with Young Baby. You know, it wasn't really much of a challenge. <laughs> what do you got? Rex Harrison. Oh, that's a nice one. That could be fun. Hey, no talking, ma'am. Ma'am? Ma'am? All right, let's try Rex Harrison and see what happens. You've done that. Rex Harrison, Audrey Hepburn, and uh, My Fair Lady. Audrey Hepburn and Richard Crennan, Wait Till Dark. Richard Crennan, and Sylvester Stallone, and First Blood. Sylvester Stallone and Kevin Bacon. Oh, no, wait, 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 fuck up. No, so the, oh, all right, well, that's right. No, uh, Richard Crane and Mickey Rourke and Bonnie Heat, Mickey Rourke and Kevin Bacon, Diner. By the way, Bonnie Heat, another fantastic film, if you get a chance to see that, it's terrific. I like the whole sex part. Uh, yeah, the sex was good in that, I thought. Um, um, it was very not graphic. Yeah, but it felt graphic. Well, sweaty thighs, too bad. All right, man, what, what was the deal with the fucking naked foot? What the fuck did you say that pissed him off, man? I, have no, I said something about being kind to homeless people, and he got freaked out. There wasn't nothing like before that, like we missed, like getting no. through it or something shit? Well, you have to ask him. Was anybody there? Did anybody went like this? I'll weird. hear about it because he always writes me about. Like he was, he was mad last week because uh, he did his poems, and then I think it was Wolfgang as a judge, mostly spent his time talking about why he wasn't wearing shoes and didn't say anything about the poetry. I, if anything, I think he misunderstood me, and the fact that I was trying to tell him to stop interrupting me might have pissed him off. So that's all I can think of. Well, I'll hear about it tomorrow. You know, I always have to do like. Well, tell the fuck off for me, and I love you. I probably say that exactly. George said, "Fuck off," and he loves you. Yeah, and talk to me about his issues because I don't know what I said to piss him off. Well, that's the point. Is we're allowed to say whatever the fuck we want here, and we're doing performance. Right. Never. Hey, I learned something very important from a guy named Clay who was my English uh, teacher over at Santa Fe. Clay Arnold is his name, great professor, one of the best. And he said, never confuse the speaker with the author, which is basically saying Stephen King is not insane and kills people. He writes about them and their characters. So don't read it like Stephen King thinks anything that he writes. He's writing characters and he's, you know, he's exploring. And that's what you do in your work. And so, you know, if he took something literal. I can't think anything I said would have been I found much of what you said offensive. I didn't storm out of the building, but it was offensive for, you know, different reasons than that. Not for bare-footed assholes. <laughs> yeah, if you're, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, you know, that doesn't offend me at all. Neither does pterodactyl pussy, but I mean, somebody's going to be upset about it. Nice shoes. So, um, all right, let's do one more and call it a day. I want a good one. Come on. Come on. George what? Sanders. George Sanders? I don't even know who that is. Okay. Nobody knows who that is. And what's he in? What movie is he in? Uh, he was in uh, we'll try. Okay. Carlos Smacks of Wombat. Was he in pterodactyl vagina too? Oh, come on, everyone was. Everyone was in pterodactyl vagina 3. I think Kevin Bacon was in pterodactyl vagina 3. I think he played the pterodactyl vagina, as I recall, which is kind of what he looks like at this point. <laughs> okay, I want I want to see. Um, How come there's only one microphone? Because this other one is, you know, I don't know, the freaking. I want to see, uh, I've got one, hold on. I want Dom DeLuise to Kevin Bacon. I think that would be fun. Uh, Dom DeLuise to Kevin Bacon. Okay. Uh, 
That's a good one, right? Smoking in the band. Really? He was in that? Yeah, he was. Was Kevin Bacon in there? I don't know. He's the second one. He wasn't smoking the band. He was the smoking band, too. He was like the doctor. Remember the doctor and they had to take the elephant down to Florida? Yeah. He said, no, you're going to kill the elephant. Or he had like an Italian. But that was only the second one. All right, Dom DeLuise to Kevin Bacon. Go. Dom DeLuise and Shirley McLean and. Um, Cannonball Run 2, wow. Shirley McLean and Jack Nicholson in terms of endearment. Jack Nicholson and Kevin Bacon, a few good men. Wow. That was beautiful. So anybody else besides me see American Sniper? I haven't seen it yet. I want to see it. Is it good? Yeah, I thought it was all right. I kind of got mad about the controversy, but I don't know. It made $400 million. I okay. think You'd rather have a hit, right? If you're a James Mason. Oh, okay. I mean, haven't you already gotten two directors' Oscars or whatever? Yeah, he's amazing. You know. I don't care what you say if he gets weird by the way, there's a there's an amazing video of Clint Eastwood and he's being harangued by reporters. And as you as you may know, some of the lefty guys like uh, what was his uh, what's the what's Michael the Moore? Michael Moore and stuff are like, well, you made a movie about a psychotic killer and blah blah blah. And he was coming out of a restaurant. And they were hounding him, and they said, Clint, Clint, what do you think about the controversy about the terrible things Michael Moore said about your film? And as he got into the limo, he went, He's right. <laughs> that guy's great, man. Not since the empty Obama chair have I seen something more fascinating than that guy. See, see the movie, uh, shit, what is it called? White Hunter Blackheart. Fucking seen. amazing film. Um, just see it. Look it up if you want to know what it's about. Redbox. Amazing film. It's not in Redbox, but I, I think it's actually available online somewhere for free. Anyway, this has been an extraordinary show. I want to thank all our guests. Nobody even came close to stumping Cinemike as usual. Is there not, not one person who's going to give us a star that keeps uh, I, I have one more question, man. Like, yeah, yeah. all right, I was done. Blah, blah, blah. I'm walking off the stage. Then the chick, Democrats, hey, you're making it But whatever, I was one ear or the other. What the fuck did I score? I didn't even like realize what I scored. Did I do all right? Oh, your last week. Did the Naked Poet do better than me? I think the Naked Poet did do better than me, man, didn't he? No, I got the scores on my computer at home. I got the scores, but I will tell you this. Okay. I know it looked like a fix because Jen, you know, sort of, you know, <laughs> is, is a, helms the place here and, and also won. But I can guarantee you... It was not a fix. Jen and Logan, like all the scores topped off here, and then there were three or four numbers further, and, and nobody even came close to their score. And you can see their performance online, thanks to the Reverend Angel Dust Archives, and you will realize when you see it that they, they won the day. But I think you actually did okay. I don't think you were like it. Definitely not the bottom tier. Yeah, like production design and shit, man. Like, I didn't really think I was going to beat that. Like, they had costumes and shit. Right. Well, you know, next time you do cinema, like, we need a costume, man. I didn't really like compete. You were like, oh, for women's thing, you want to get up. I'm like, yeah, all right. But I mean, like, I just hope I scored decently. Like, I really, she was like, oh. I was like, yeah, whatever, man. Like, I don't know if this has ever crossed your mind, Cinemike, but I'm actually a shitty host. Oh yeah, it's crossed my mind a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, nobody has a star to step Cinemike, because then we get to, we're just going to go. I do. Okay, one more, Michael. Michael, the, the best dressed of the deacons, the minister of the interior, a force to be reckoned with. Please give us your star for the final Cinemike to Kevin Bacon moment, and then we'll get the fuck out of here, and we'll see you next Monday. I think they scheduled a kangaroo festival, so we'll be starting the show at 1 in the morning. What have you got? Lenny Reichert's star. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Right, the, the, the hell of Pitts Palou. Oh, he's going to do James Mason. Yeah, we already did James Mason. Let's just forget it. We do him all the time. You keep saying James Mason like once, once every six months you pull James Mason out of your ass as if it's going to stump cinema and nothing happens. Give me somebody else. Fuck 
change bases. SpongeBob. No, no. Uh, no, we did fuck, fuck SpongeBob too. Uh, 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 Peter Sellers. Okay, that'll be fun, just for laughs, but it'll, it'll be too easy. But Peter Sellers is a good actor to bring up. All right, to close our show, Cinemike is going to put Peter Sellers connected to Kevin Bacon. I say he gets it in four. Peter Sellers and George C. Scott, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Hating the Bomb and Love It. Who gives a shit? Who gives a shit? George C. Scott and Tom Cruise and Taps. Oh shit. Tom Cruise and Kevin Bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, damn it. Oh, damn it. Reverend, any last words? Nice job. Sit oh, like Long and Prosper. Sit Long and Prosper. God is blessed, yeah. Letter the B. genie is out of the bottle. Marijuana what? is going to be legalized. Oh, gotcha. If not tomorrow, the next day, Alaska legalized, D.C. legalized, Florida, there are bills on the floor. Support them. Give Brother Dwight, Brother Senator Dwight, your support. Dwight, Dwight is right. Dwight has a bill on the floor that will legalize marijuana in Florida. And we encourage him to keep introducing that bill so that the folks down in Key West will keep getting him reelected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 A woman. A woman. A joint. A joint. God is blessed. Hallelujah. God is blessed. The Reverend Angel Doss, thanks Jen, thanks Daryl, thanks Nina, thanks folks, thanks one people from the Ocala Forest, just like clouds with balloons in their nose. The most boring act of the evening. <laughs> nice guy though. I like it. See you later. Show home.